Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's November 5th. Glad you are with us. We'll talk to Stephen and Justin coming up. Get you updated on the traffic and weather. We've been hearing for years now that people are flocking to the state of Texas. Look no further than and, and like celebrities are moving to Austin. Yes. Elon Musk has moved his whole thing here. But uh, what about people that are uh, other people that are moving? There's a new survey out that ranks Texas number one for the most loyal residents amid the pandemic. Yeah, so this is according to some information from Lending Tree. Um, and so let me go ahead and look at the, the list there. So it has states with the most movers looking to head out of state. So just so you know, Texas is not on this list. Uh, we have number one of movers looking to move out of state, uh, New York. New York, people on the move. Mm -hmm. See ya. Uh, also on the list, North Dakota and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And also Rhode Island and Alaska coming in at number five. Now the states with the most movers looking to stay put in the state, number one, yes, yeah. the good old Lone Star State, Texas. Texas, yeah, nobody wants to leave Texas. And then Oklahoma comes in at number two. Uh, number three, we have Florida. Rounded up by Georgia and Michigan. So here are the numbers. 85% of movers on average stay in the state when they're, which they're living. Mm -hmm. Texas residents love Texas. Texas has the highest percentage of residents looking to move within the state at 93.33%. And it says not only is Texas popular among its residents, but it's relatively inexpensive home prices and lack of a state income tax also make it a popular destination for out of state movers. Yep, from places like Alaska, Colorado and California. Yeah. That's why they're here. Yes, a lot a, of them. A majority of out of state movers don't go far. The most popular new destination for home buyers in 27 states bordered the state from which they were moving. And for out of state movers, Florida is a number one. Number one, Florida, the favorite out of state destination for mortgage shoppers in 18 of the 50 states. Maybe they like Texas winter or Texas fall. Yeah, I mean, 49 is <laughs> not too bad. All it's no. a little chilly for some folks. Yeah, some people. We get it. We get everything here in San Antonio. Let's look at today's nine at nine. Pushback is building against federal vaccine mandates. Louisiana, Indiana, and Mississippi have filed lawsuits against the Biden administration, saying the mandates constitute federal overreach and risk negatively impacting the workforce. The White House says it's confident in its authority to mandate vaccines for workers. The first votes expected today on two pillars of President Biden's agenda. House members will vote on a sweeping social security safety net and the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Multiple provisions are still being hammered out. Passage for the infrastructure bill has already been pushed back twice. The funeral for former Secretary of State Colin Powell will be held at 11 this morning. Powell died in October from COVID-19 complications. He served four U.S. presidents and rose to become the first and youngest African-American chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State. The funeral is not open to the public. The Department of Justice suing Texas over its new voting laws. DOJ says the restrictions disenfranchise eligible voters and violate federal voting rights laws. This is the same bill that caused Texas Democrats to leave the state earlier this year. Two people are dead after a shooting at a popular tourist resort in Mexico. Authorities say there was a confrontation between drug dealers in Puerto Morelos about 15 miles south of Cancun. Social media footage shows guests huddled indoors taking shelter from the danger. Authorities implied that the drug dealers were the ones killed. There are no reports of tourists being injured. Authorities in Colorado believe they have solved a nearly 40-year-old cold case in Rocky Mountain National Park. Skeletal remains found in the mountains are believed to be those of 27-year-old Rudy Moeller from Germany. He disappeared in 1983. The U.S. State Department is offering a $10 million reward for information on the hackers who forced a shutdown of the Colonial Pipeline earlier this year. A $5 million reward is also being offered for information that leads to the arrest or conviction of anyone who conspires to participate in a hack involving the so-called dark side ransomware. CBS needs doctors, the nation's largest drugstore chain, telling the Wall Street Journal it plans to hire physicians with the hopes of becoming a major health care provider. CEO Karen Lynch says a top priority is creating primary care services, noting the role physicians can play in lowering insurers' costs. A sure sign that the holiday season is right around the corner. The 2021 Rockefeller Christmas tree has been selected. The 79-foot, 12-ton Norway spruce was donated by a family in Maryland. The tree is expected to arrive in New York City next weekend. And that's today's 9 at 9. 
and it was in the 9 at 9 there, but a little bit more an important programming note. There will be an ABC special report this morning for the funeral of Secretary of State, former Secretary of State Colin Powell. That will begin at 11 a.m. San Antonio time. And for now, let's look outside with live cam. It's been a cold morning. We're at 49 degrees now. Still chilly for people out there. It is chilly. It got really cold this morning. I mean, we dipped down into the low 40s here in San Antonio. The big reason why is the clouds cleared out overnight. We had clear skies that allows temperatures to drop faster, and, and we saw those pretty low numbers. Now the clouds moved back in, so that's going to make temperatures a little bit tricky today. I think we probably stay on the cool side, but right now we're sitting at 49. Northeasterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. Forecast 61, 62 for high. I think that's probably about it. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour because we'll be so uh, slow to warm today with these, uh, at least first half of the day with these clouds in place. Let's look at the lows this morning. 42 here in San Antonio, 37 Bernie stage. So yes, it was a cold morning. Now out west, the clouds stuck around, so that kept temperatures up. 52 in Uvalde, 56 in Del Rio. And there's a look at that cloud cover. So if you're east of San Antonio, you're seeing the sun. If you're San Antonio and points west, it is cloudy. And of course, the big question will be, when will those clouds break up and thin out? We think it'll be this afternoon. 190 on mold, it's low. We ended the week on a good note with the pollen count. And here are the headlines for today. Clouds clear slowly. This weekend, mostly sunny and beautiful. You're going to love the forecast this weekend. And next week, it does get warmer and humidity returns. We've had some issues on the roadways this morning. Let's get over to Stephen now with the latest there. Hey, thank you so much, Justin. Well, we do have an update here off 410. It looks like we're seeing traffic moving through there from the shot at State Highway 151. Again, right there at Loop 410, we did have an incident working there that has caused a portion of 410 to be shut down, and obviously it is leading to a domino effect when it comes to traffic. Check this out right here. This is a different shot from Loop 410, again, right at State Highway 151. If you were with us a little bit earlier, you did see that there was a stretch of traffic that looked almost like a river of cars there on 410, and that's because that portion was blocked locked off due to that incident there uh, in the southbound lanes right at Marbach. Now it looks like we still have a little bit closed off at this hour, but make sure that you are driving accordingly and maybe planning an, an alternative route because uh, it looks like they're clearing out, but not sure how long the highway will be closed at this hour. Taking you up here to 35, a quick crash here off I-35 northbound at Judson Road. Looks like it has cleared out. The lanes are pretty green and we're seeing a lot of resolution around town. Granted, there is some congestion there on 1604 that is due to some construction, but right now the biggest issue has been here on 4 10 at State Highway 151. Traffic is moving and it looks like we may be seeing some resolve pretty soon, but we'll continue to give you those updates throughout the morning. But again, all this information can be posted on air and on air uh, on air and online. That is for the very latest. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Top stories we are following today. One man is dead after crashing his car on the northeast side overnight. Happened just after three this morning on I-35 North uh, near Walsham. Take a look at video from the scene. Police say a man's vehicle crashed into the back of a trailer. Emergency crews performed CPR, but they were unsuccessful. The, sus the man died at the scene. It's unclear if anyone else was hurt, and this crash is still under investigation. Also new this morning, cleanup is underway after a vehicle crashed into a south side home. It happened around 2 this morning on Neal Avenue near Pleasanton Road. Police tell us a man and woman inside the car took off after the crash. They also hit a tree and a utility pole. No one was hurt. In your morning headlines, two federal agencies are teaming up to put a stop to airline passengers getting out of control and teens on the run from police. Plus, eagles battling for territory and a bison has to get some help getting back home. David Sears is here on a Friday morning. Good morning. We're not talking about the singing eagles either. We're no. About like real no. live right. real, real eagles. Like eagle eagles. Get that in just a second. But first, the FAA has had enough of passengers losing it on flights and attacking other passengers and even punching flight attendants. The Federal Aviation Administration can't arrest passengers who turn violent, but the Justice Department can. So the two agencies have teamed up to see if they can't take care of this problem. The one big solution, jail time. The FAA says that flight crews have reported 5,033 unruly incidents just this year alone. The FAA has sent more than three dozen cases to the DOJ. So far, the FAA is asking for the DOJ to put 37 passengers in jail. They've had enough of flight attendants getting yelled down and even attacked. We know this works, and the Justice Department just has to take action, put some people in jail, and have people understand there's severe consequences if you act out like this on a plane and put everyone in jeopardy. The crews are there for passenger safety, and this is about a behavior that's not appropriate in an aviation environment, and we need to get it under control. 
Yeah, I remember last week a guy on an American Airlines flight punched a flight attendant. Police and the FBI greeted him at the gate when they landed. He was charged with punching a flight attendant and interfering with a flight crew. He could get up to 20 years in prison. An intersection in Cincinnati, left side here, that's a Jeep coming into the intersection. That's a car hitting the Jeep on its side. And then it slides into a pole, and that's where the crash ended, right? In that utility pole and another car. Here it is again for you. There were three teenagers in that car, including a 14- and 15-year-old. They climbed out of the car and started running. They were eventually caught and taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The police were trying to pull them over for drugs. When they hit them with their lights, the teens took off, and then the chase ended against that pole. Literally could have died today, could have killed somebody else. Like the person in the Jeep was super lucky as well. Now police are investigating to see if the teens are part of a car stealing ring. All right, let's take it to Minnesota. You are looking at a street fight. Yep, two eagles duking it out over territory. Forget fists and feet, we're talking talons and beaks. This was such a tough street fight. A cop was called to the scene to try and calm the situation. We do have de-escalation tactics, uh, but I've never applied them to eagles or other animals. Officer Martin remained a, uh, on the scene. He watched a TV show and he tried to use a cover that he learned from watching that TV show to cover the faces of the birds. Uh, things just got a little worse. Birds really went after each other after he tried to do that. They eventually calmed down and then flew away. Martin said they looked like they were just fine when they flew off. Just couldn't tell who won the battle, though. And finally, don't get excited. Yes, that is a big bison, but no, it is not dead. Just asleep. Take a little nap. The big dude got away from his home at a farm there in New Jersey and started roaming around the neighborhoods. The local SPCA tracked him down and then tranquilized him. The picture makes him look kind of thin, but he really is in good shape. He's about 2,500 pounds. When he woke up, he was back home. By the way, his name is Bicentennial. Ah, <laughs> that's cute. That's nice. Like that. So everything's good. He's all right. Good. Yeah, all he right. is a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen the documentary about the band, The Eagles? Mm -hmm. Because in the early yeah. days, I swear there were some scenes an awful lot like those two, <laughs> those two <laughs> birds going at it. Glenn Fry and somebody, I forget. Really? But yeah. yeah, back so in the early days. Uh, yeah. They called them complicated relationships. Yeah. Well, that one was... Pretty complicated I, there. For a minute. Yeah. And it looked like it got decided. The big dude won. The big Whichever dude. That one is. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, 910, about 49 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A look at the correlation between zip codes in San Antonio and vaccination rates, how these numbers could reveal vaccine disparities. Plus, well, retailers gearing up for a busy holiday season in the midst of that labor shortage, how it could impact you. Good morning. We're live from Hemisphere for a little preview on one of the biggest festivals across the nation. It's Diwali Festival of Lights happening here in San Antonio. It's tomorrow, but just ahead here on GMSA, a peek at what the celebration means. The Diwali celebration returns to San Antonio this weekend. The culture, good eats, beautiful art, music of India will be celebrated during the 13th annual Diwali SA Festival of Lights. And traditionally, it is a festival that lasts five days and celebrates new beginnings. Alicia Beretta is live from Hemisphere, where the city celebrations will kick off tomorrow evening. Good morning. Well, Diwali translates to row of light. So quite literally, Hemisphere will transform into a row of lights and those lights will be dancing to the beat of the music, specifically from the Indian film industry. So that will be a sight to see. This is a celebration of happiness. And with me, I have Asha John. She's one of the organizers for Diwali Festival of Lights. You're celebrating your 13 year. Diwali, what, where does it originate from? Well, Diwali is actually the celebration of the last harvest in winter, where the bountiful crops bring together family, friends, neighbors, and communities to share and to remember the years past while also celebrating the year to come. It's actually also the marks the beginning of a new year for some, and in others, Diwali means different things, but they all share in the same sentiment, celebrating the triumph of good over evil.
And with Diwali, one of the Diwali, one of the cool things that I recently learned is that the celebration also includes marigolds. We just celebrated Day of the Dead, but for Diwali, it has a slightly different meaning. What is that? Yes, with the amount of marigolds you see in Indian festivals, you'd think it's a native plant. It's actually not. It is from Central and South America, brought to India late in the 16th century. It's representative of the sun. It kind of symbolizes the power, the strength, and that light within us. That's beautiful. So tomorrow, what can visitors expect? Starts at 6 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday. Well, we're very excited to be in person this year. As you said, Hemisphere will be lit up like it's never been lit before. We'll have beautiful drum sounds from across India. We'll also showcase people wearing traditional wear, dances. There'll be delicious food for sale, vendors selling handicrafts from all over India, and we'll have our Dia release, where we light um, little clay lamps and release them into the fountains. We'll also have Rangoli designs, something new this year, where intricate patterns are laid across the floor, drawn with colored powder and made with flowers. Asha, thank you so much. And I hope the community in San Antonio can come check this festival out, 13th annual. And it's actually one of the biggest Diwali festivals in the nation. So San Antonio is very lucky to be hosting it again for the 13th year. Back to you guys. Thank you, Alicia. And they have great weather to celebrate this weekend. Uh, yeah, it's just chilly out there this morning. And Justin would be the first to tell you Mother Nature is messing with his forecast today. He's about to show you why. Yeah, you're right, Mark. Low clouds uh, always make forecasting difficult, forecasting temperatures at least. And we were wondering what these clouds were going to do this morning. We were right on the dividing line here in San Antonio, and I've got visual proof of that. Take a look at this time lapse. So this was at 730. That was the scene outside. Dark clouds there. That's the low cloud deck. And then you can see the sunrise as we look off to the east. Those clouds made their way east and now we're cloudy here in San Antonio. East of town, the sun's still out. But with these clouds around, that's going to keep temperatures down a little bit. 49 degrees at the airport right now. Northeast Julie winds at about five miles per hour. And looking at the satellite picture, we get a better idea here of where that line is right there so it's just made it to the edge of bear county and then the question becomes when will these clouds thin out when will they break up when will the sun come back we think that'll be this afternoon so it's going to take a little bit of time for these clouds to break up again if you're east of san antonio the sun is out and uh, it, it's warming up some uh, the lows this morning down to 42 here in san antonio and this is sort of the opposite effect because those clouds cleared out briefly overnight that allowed temperatures to drop. The clouds set off to our west. That kept temperatures up in places like Hondo, where it only got down to 52, 56 in Del Rio. But underneath the clear skies, got down to 41 in Gonzales. So you can see the role the clouds play here. Temperatures right now, 49 in Kerrville, 48 in New Braunfels, 45 in Gonzales. Still some 50s underneath those clouds. Carrizo Springs out to Del Rio. Our forecast today. I'd say at least mostly cloudy through noontime. And then once the sun comes out, we'll start to warm things up. But if lower temperatures down to about 62 for a high this afternoon, and uh, you'll be in the 50s for most of the hill country, 55 Kerrville, 58 Rock Springs, and then a little bit warmer down to the south, 67 in Creaso Springs, 68 in Catula today. Then as we transition into tomorrow morning, it's going to be another cold start. 43 here in San Antonio. I do think we see some 30s in the Hill Country, 39 in Kerrville, 37 in Fredericksburg. No freezing temperatures, though. And then the rest of the weekend looks awesome. Dew points, they stay low through the weekend. And then into next week, they'll start to rise a little bit. But you probably won't notice it until Tuesday or Wednesday. So we're going to get a pretty good stretch here of dry weather. Here's the big picture across the country and we're in between systems. There's one down here around Florida producing a lot of rain there, one across the Pacific Northwest. But high pressure is in control for us and it will be that uh, way through the weekend. I want to show you the forecast for UTSA. I have the nighttime map on there because this game tomorrow doesn't start until 915 Central Time. Of course, 815 El Paso time. Uh, they play UTEP there at the Sun Bowl. 66 a kickoff. Should be great weather for UTEP to uh, hopefully lose. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, well, I know we have some UTEP fans out there, so I don't know. Listen, it'll be a good game. Just say it the other way around. Just say we want UTSA to win. Yeah, UTSA to win. There, there you go. go. That sounds better. Uh, 62 <laughs> today, 71 Saturday, 75 on Sunday. 
And then 70 as much next week. It warms up to near 80. My apologies <laughs> to all those UTEP fans. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We're, yeah. We back UTSA. At least yeah. we're experts in saying UTSA correctly. That's here right. That's in true. our area, yes. in our home schools. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> right now, just about 921, about 49 degrees. And still head on GMSA at 9. Why you could run into much longer lines in stores this holiday season. And welcome back. It is 924. Despite the rising cost for goods and nationwide shipping issues, retailers have high hopes for holiday sales. But the holiday rush is about to collide with a historically tight labor market. That means extra help may be tough to find. Karen Kafa looks at how employers are trying to sweeten the deal for workers and what that crunch might mean for all of us consumers. Retailers forecast for November and December, merry and bright. We're expecting retail sales in those months to grow somewhere between 8.5 and 10.5% over last year. But to keep up with shopper demand, they'll need help. There is, you know, it's a palpable sense of urgency this year among employers who are looking for seasonal workers. And crunch time for holiday hiring is colliding with a very tight labor market. The Labor Department said there were more than 10 million job openings across the U.S. heading into September, when most retailers were finalizing holiday plans. At the same time, more than 4 million Americans left jobs, including 721,000 retail workers. Anne Elizabeth Conkel, an economist for Indeed Hiring Lab, says those roles are tougher to fill. We are still in a pandemic. There are still concerns about COVID. A lot of holiday jobs are, um, you know, for in-person work um, and child care challenges uh, continue to abound. The pandemic accelerated online shopping habits and Andy Challenger, senior vice president of outplacement firm Challenger Gray and Christmas, says that's changing how retailers have to hire too. Retailers are trying to fill positions both in their retail stores and at every point in the supply chain along the way from transportation shipping from the docks into the warehouses. So the hiring push is on. They're really trying to sweeten the deal uh, to get workers this year. Kohl's offering bonuses of $100 to $400 through the holiday stretch. Target promising $2 more per hour during peak shifts. Macy's offering $500 referral bonuses. Walmart holding hiring events focused on supply chain roles with some paying upwards of $20 per hour. And Amazon offering sign-on bonuses of up to $3,000. Still, Challenger forecast most will fall short of hiring goals. The labor market is too tight. There are not enough people ready and willing to, to work right now to fill all the positions that are currently open. Another reason consumers might add patience to their holiday checklists. In Washington, I'm Karen Kifa. Good luck, everybody. 926, about 50 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Researchers here in San Antonio are doing their work in the dark, and for good reason. Details on this glow-in-the-dark technology and what it's being used for. Plus, well, another big night in high school football. Look at some of the matchups and preview of this weekend's college and NFL matchups later with RJ and David. Hi, welcome back. It's 930. Taking a look outside with live cam. We're at 50 degrees. It's been a chilly morning, but for those who are not huge fans of the cold, I guess this weekend looks pretty nice. Yeah, there's some improvements on the way. It's probably going to take until this afternoon before we really start to see temperatures warm up and then this weekend will be fantastic. But this uh, this satellite picture really tells the story here. We're just kind of getting our first glimpses with the visible satellite picture. But you can see where the edge of the clouds are. They have now made it through Bear County and they're still kind of working east there. So Seguin's next in line. New Braunfels at Cloud Deck is right on your doorstep. Now there's, there's no rain with these clouds or anything like that. It's just those morning low clouds. And then the question becomes how long do they stick around? We got some great pictures. The sun coming up with that cloud deck moving through. This is from MOC. Great shot this morning. We appreciate those pictures on KSAT Connect. Keep them coming. Keep sending them in. You can do that with the KSAT weather app, by the way. Here's the scene in town. It is indeed cloudy. Temperatures sitting at 49 at the airport. Northeasterly winds at around 5 miles per hour. And yes, there is a little bit of a wind chill just because there is a small breeze. Forecast for today, I think the clouds will eventually break up or thin out. We'll be up around 62. That's it. So still kind of a cool day. But we're back in the 70s this weekend. And yes, the weekend forecast is great. Next week looks pretty good, too. We'll break it all down for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now, traffic looks good at 410 and 151. A backlog from earlier has now cleared. 
Taking a glimpse at Bear County's vaccination rates by zip code could paint a picture of disparity. For example, some areas are considered fully vaccinated with rates of only eight or nine percent, while others have vaccination rates of nearly 70 percent. And nearly 65 percent of the whole city is vaccinated. So are these slight differences even something to pay attention to? KSET's Lee Waldman has a story. It's also a possibility that part of the part of the population is outside of our county. Um, so that may be one of the reasons why it's low as well. In fact, talking with people in the 78108 zip code, we were hard pressed to find anyone who is unvaccinated. And I'm a Christian. I believe I'm going to go to heaven because I believe in Jesus. But I was like, maybe I'll stick around a little longer. Um, so I got vaccinated. <laughs> um, I was actually one of the first to get to, in the first round to get my vaccine. Um, I just feel like it's a way to help myself as well as other people. It really kind of is, is the similar trend that we see with other health issues and other disparities that happen across you know, the, the county. So next we went there, zip codes 78219 and 78202. Responses were different. One young woman who didn't want to go on camera said she didn't want the vaccine but had to for school. Both of her parents also unvaccinated because of vaccine distrust. It's a frustrating battle healthcare workers are fighting. We need other individuals, especially individuals from those communities, to share their stories and to try to help encourage. Looking at the map of the city and seeing the varying rates of vaccination, it's nearly impossible for the health department to point to one key reason why there are disparities. I think if we knew why there were the disparities, then it would be a quick. So I think it's definitely a multitude of reasons why. But Dr. Espinosa says there is good news. There used to be more zip codes falling behind. Things like going door to door, community partnerships, encouragement from trusted peers is working. We just kind of have to stay on the course um, and continue. Vaccinations proving to be more of a marathon than a sprint. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. Well, data like this, one of the reasons Metro is having more pop up clinics, it's bringing them to areas with lower vaccination rates. The hope is that more people will take advantage of the service since they won't have to travel far to get vaccinated. And the clinics will be at different locations every day. We have more information on that and the locations where kids can get vaccinated. That's all on our website at KSET.com. Well, speaking of COVID-19, a team of scientists here in San Antonio doing such important work with the virus that hundreds of teams around the world want to use their research. And KSET's Courtney Friedman explains how making viruses glow in the dark like what you saw behind us could speed up the process of making new COVID-19 drugs and vaccines. This gray cluster of cells under a microscope contains the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the one that causes COVID-19. But it takes researchers a long time to figure out which of these cells are infected. Now, look at this. Each bright green dot is the virus. With these fluorescent viruses, you can easily identify if a cell is infected or not. Virologist Dr. Luis Martinez Sobrito leads the team at Texas Biomedical Research Institute that successfully modified the virus to glow brightly in cells and animal tissue, allowing them to track the spread and intensity in real time. You can identify what cells are the primary target for the virus when it infects the lungs. They can watch it affect the lungs because they're also able to track these glowing viruses in mice and hamsters. They use different color fluorescence to distinguish between the viruses. For example, this green one is the original SARS-CoV-2 virus, where over here on the other side of the lab, this red one is the South African variant. We have cells that are infected with both at the same time. They're also beginning to work with the Delta variant. Watching how these different variants attack cells will help researchers more quickly develop possible antiviral medications and more powerful vaccines. The groundbreaking research is in high demand. We have over 100 to 100 requests from all over the world because this is the most powerful tool in modern biology, not only for SARS-CoV-2, but for other viruses. The local team proud to be fueling the science that will inevitably save lives all over the world. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And the COVID-19 pandemic has been life changing for nearly everyone, but it's taken one San Antonio man on a unique journey. 33 year old Michael Collins said he felt called to take the ultimate 3,800 mile trip from here to Alaska, but he didn't drive. He walked. That's a picture of him there on your screen hiking. KSAT digital journalist Julie Moreno talked to him about his adventure. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This 
is amazing. Inspired by shows about the Alaskan frontier and feeling frustrated by restrictions of pandemic living, Michael Collins strapped on a backpack last January and started walking to Alaska. I did not really have much of a plan. I knew that I needed to go northwest. The former soccer player had no experience with backpacking or camping, but he literally took the journey one step at a time. So this is about me and my walk with God. Um, and also my craving for um, an adventure that is uh, a bit more primitive and a bit more in the other direction than the, today's common adventures. The philosophy um, led him to right, unexpected I, I paths and generous game. people. <laughs> How's it going? If somebody stops by and gives you a turkey leg or something like sandwich, it's amazing. So thank you, Jesse. A stranger in New Mexico even welcomed him into her home just as February storms were blowing in. Snowing, about four degrees, I am so thankful. I had a place to stay. It wouldn't be his last battle with Mother Nature. You're beautiful. I'm sorry for bothering you. I, and yes, you he had encounters with rattlesnakes and bears. And obviously it gets your heart pounding. But it's the mental obstacles that he overcame on the trail that he's most proud of. Looking back on the, on the trip, you know, it was really hard. Um, it was really grueling. It took a lot of endurance. And not only that, I learned about patience and I learned about, you know, self-control. After a ferry ride to Ketchikan, Collins made it to Alaska exactly nine months after he left San Antonio. He's not sure what comes next, but that's okay. And I learned quickly along the way that it was just one step in front of the other. And one of the most valuable experiences that I learned from that journey is just being very present. Julie Moreno, KSAT 12 News. Julie, we love the story. Yes, that's pretty Great cool. job. And it's on our website, just in case y'all missed it. And Collins plans to stay in Ketchikan at least through the winter. He's working the night shift at a homeless shelter where he's been able to use the lessons he's learned to support others on their paths. And as uh, Steph said, you can read more about the journey on KSAT.com. And tune in to GMSA tomorrow morning for part two of the story. Collins talks about the biggest lessons he learned from the experience, other than apologizing to a snake or <laughs> <laughs> interrupting him. Whatever works. Yeah, right? the snake's like, no problem. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. <laughs> 939, about 15 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And a look ahead at this weekend's sports matchups next with David and RJ. Welcome back. It's the final regular season weekend for high school football and playoff positioning is on the line. Just the start of a busy football weekend. David and RJ are on the clock and go. <laughs> We're on Here the we clock. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, we, our pick won't get in on time. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it's not going to get up to the podium in time. <laughs> Probably not. Um, let's start with high school football. Yeah. Some big games this weekend Ooh. to decide playoff position mm -hmm. and even some whether or not you get into the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't get any bigger than Smithson Valley versus Steel. That is uh, for the district title there. Steel already has a share of that, but Smithson Valley trying to get in it. And then the Hammer Bowl, David. Hammer Judson Bowl. Judson versus Hammer Wagner. Bowl. Judson, first time in decades that wow. they're not going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. So, uh, But this is still a big rivalry game there out for the Judson ISD. All right, you still got Jay and Taft. Taft go. is still battling for that for that spot. Yeah, big game the for Taft. Spot. Yeah, big game for Taft. Brennan yep. beat Marshall last night, so Brennan goes undefeated. Congrats to the Bears. So that means Taft can actually jump Marshall. They beat Marshall earlier this season, so big game there. And then Brandeis versus Reagan. That's always a uh, two yeah. big time schools there. That'll be fun. And we're dropping down to a some smaller school. Look at Central Catholic taking on Antonia. That's going to be a, a big game, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And then Potite. We put Potit in there. They're ranked sixth in sub 5A mm -hmm. in 12 stop 12. So they got some stuff right on the line for, you know, playoff position going against Randolph tonight. So yeah, the we'll Potit, the Aggies out there in Potit, uh, they have a running back, David, Ernest Davila, two straight years that he's gone over 2,000 yards rushing. So very impressive from him. He's one of the top rushers in the entire state. Yeah, Potit's had a great season. Well, they so have Randolph. strawberries at the game. <laughs> well, they played at Randolph, so maybe they'll bring some. Yeah, that is yeah. the most important question. Can they bring some strawberries? <laughs> All right, so now we're going on to college football this weekend. And if you sit next to Justin Horn, oh, my goodness gracious. Aggies, 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 and more Aggies. And he's got every stinking scenario you can think of of how the Aggies can get into the SEC championship and then make it into the playoff. But yes. first, 
they got to win this weekend. Uh, they do have to win this weekend. They play Auburn at Kyle Field. So what a year if you're for an Aggies fan going to these games. You get Alabama at home, and then you get Auburn. And I call this basically like a, like a loser leaves town match pretty much because <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> the loser of this game is pretty much going to be out of the running for the college football playoff. I think Auburn's 13th. A&M's 14th, and right, point, Justin? Yep. That's, that's, right? Okay, that's there correct. There we go. <laughs> so so what, you want to go right. out through the scenario real quick for us? Can you, can you wrap that up in like 10 seconds? A&M has to win out. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. And then uh, Alabama has to lose once. That's it. Okay. So that's why you're a big LSU fan this weekend too, yeah. right? Okay. Purple. Oh wow. You and uh, you and what Ursula. The heck? Really? Yeah. It's it's. I'm telling <laughs> you, go really? sit next to the guy and he's yeah. got it all figured out. But that's called peer pressure from Ursula Perry. Hey, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm wearing Aggie colors. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was so that's going on, and also UTSA is going. For their ninth win in mm -hmm. a row, stay mm -hmm. undefeated nine. They're in. They're at UTEP. They're in El Paso. They're in El Paso, That's right. Justin. Yep. That's where they are. I'm trying to help you out there. <laughs> so this game. So obviously, UTSA now ranked 16th in the country in the AP poll. They did get snubbed in the college football ranking playoffs, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a different story. I don't know there, that they got but, uh, snubbed. Well, I mean, I, you, know, you know, they're they're 16th in the country for crying out loud. Yeah, in the in the rankings of the college yeah. football rankings, I That's mean, still yeah. pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Justin, what times the game start? 9:15. <laughs> what? Who's Our time? time? Mountain time. That's Paso. mountain yeah. time. See, El Paso is like the only city in this whole state is on a different time zone. They got their it own is. time zone out yeah. there now, Paso. Yeah. They're on mountain time. So, um, so the uh, game a, starts at 8.15. Expecting a big crowd, so, yeah. big crowd that'll out be, there be for fun. that game day. All right, let's get, to, let's get to Sunday. Let's start with the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott says, I'm playing. Mm -hmm. he, he watched Cooper Rush last week win one. He's like, ooh, I got to get back <laughs> out there. I got to get my job back. <laughs> I got to yeah. get my, I don't lose my job to Cooper Rush. So he's back in there. And also, Michael Gallup could be back on the field. Remember, he was like yeah. the first week he got hurt or something like that. So, yeah. so he could be back. And not only that, but they could also get Demarcus Lawrence back. He's yeah, that was, a, that was a little bit iffy there. Uh, yeah. CD Lamb, of course, uh, was in the was on the injury report earlier, but I think he's going to be good to go. Trayvon Diggs is pretty good to go. And we see right there, Micah Parsons had a great, great Sunday night game where he won the Defensive Player of the Week. So Cowboys rolling. They get the Broncos. No more Von Miller for Denver. No. Anymore. So that's yeah. All right, we're going to spend a little more time on the Texans than oh, we boy. normally do because the Texans <laughs> might get Tyron Taylor back at quarterback. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to help. All right, now let's move on. <laughs> Wow. That was it? <laughs> More time than normal I spent on him. Oh my goodness. And when they start winning some games and playing some real football over there, I'll go yeah. More time Tyrod, on. he should play for yeah. them this week. They play yeah. at Miami. Yeah, we got to get to the Spurs now. Let's get to the Spurs. Start. Spurs in Orlando. What was about Orlando? There, why didn't you go to Orlando? You went to the first one. It was here. You could have flown to Orlando, Steph, and I you could have helped them out. They yeah. didn't win Good. really bad. Yeah. And you were their good luck charm for Have here. a good trip, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back. We can get you a Side flight to Orlando eye. before yeah, tip off. Right up Surely back. we can. Um, Spurs versus the Orlando Magic at home. Of course, that was one of the two Spurs wins mm. that we have so yeah. far this season. So <laughs> hopefully they could uh, bounce back here. It's the start of a two-game road trip, and then they're at Oklahoma City Oklahoma on Sunday. City. Yeah, and they're, what, two and, uh, two and six or something two like and that? Two yeah. 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 and six, yeah. They need to win. And remember, they lost to the Mavericks like in the last second, couldn't get the end. Oh, we don't want to go through oh, that again. Boy. We were so yeah, hopeful yeah. with the first game. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. left there feeling really confident. I was like, yeah, this is it. But and you haven't been to one since, right? No. no. Uh, see? <laughs> Put it on That's you. That's obviously it. You got you to gotta wear the right outfit and go to the game. <laughs> yeah, wear the right outfit. Thank you. All right. Leo. Go Spurs go. <laughs> go David, Spurs. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Their pick is in. 948 right now. Justin is standing by what I'd like to call lost and found. We know where Lost Maples is, yes. and he has found the latest foliage update. Yes, a uh, big update here because things are starting to change out there. Leaves are responding to these cold fronts. This is going to be one of the peak weeks, I think, coming up. So those yellows are starting to turn orange and the oak trees starting to turn red. Next seven to ten days, best viewing of the season. Here's the thing, though. The weekends are now sold out until Thanksgiving. So if you're going to buy a, a day pass, the weekdays are still available, but you got to go online and do that. So just a heads up there. I know a lot of people like to head out to Lost Maples this time of year. We're hitting the peak right now. We're headed into it at least. 42 this morning. That was a low here in San Antonio. 37 in Bernie stage. It was a chilly, chilly start. We had clear skies for a time that allowed those temperatures to drop here around San Antonio. At least as you go west, the clouds stayed in place and that kept temperatures up. So 52 was the low this morning in Hondo, 56 in Del Rio. But you go east where the clear skies were. It was 41 in Gonzales. Live cam shows we've got cloudy skies now here in San Antonio. Those clouds moved back in. 49 degrees at the airport, 53 Stinson, 50 at Kelly. 
and still 48 at Randolph for the northeasterly breeze. So there is a little bit of a wind chill too. Satellite picture shows where the edge of those clouds are. You get out of Bear County and you hit the sun. So 48 in New Braunfels. The clouds are just starting to move in there. Same story in Seguin, 46. But 50 Port SA, 54 Cashierville underneath uh, those clouds. And that cloud deck stretches from mm, eastern Bear County all the way out to Del Rio and South Creso Springs, Catula, also within the clouds. These clouds will break up, but it's going to take a little bit of time for that to happen. And then eventually we'll get some sun a little bit later this afternoon. But because it'll be slow to warm this morning, we're going to lower daytime highs to about 62. Northeast Julie winds will stay light 5 to 10. Today we'll still see some 50s in the hill country, so sort of a cool fall like day. And then tonight, as skies clear, we get those numbers down into the low 40s again here in San Antonio, and probably some 30s in the hill country. So it'll be a chilly start to your Saturday, but we get up to 71 tomorrow and 75 on Sunday. That is a great looking weekend. Should be really nice for any plans that you have outdoors. As far as the dew point is concerned, it's uh, fairly low right now. It stays low through, I'd say Monday. It's not really until Tuesday and Wednesday that the dew point starts to rise a little bit. We get a little more humidity in here, which means some more cloud cover and eventually down the line, probably some rain chances. Here is the big picture area of low pressure moving towards Florida. That's bringing heavy rain there. And then another storm system moving in on the Pacific Northwest, but we are staying quiet here in Texas. 71 Saturday, 75 Sunday, as I mentioned. And then next week we warm up to near 80 with more clouds Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Hey guys, good morning. Coming up on live, we will chat with Fisher Stevens from Succession, plus New Amsterdam's Ryan Eggo. That's all coming up on live. And November is Diabetes Awareness Month. It's a disease many are diagnosed with every day, but how much do you know about it? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to show you some of the early warning signs. Traffic alert. Part of 410 is shut down right now due to a major accident. This is 410 westbound at Ingram. First responders are on the scene, but the frontage road is already stacking up. But again, 410 westbound closed right there near Ingram Park Mall. Justin. And cloudy skies out there. We're in even 50 degrees. 62 this afternoon. Clouds should eventually clear this afternoon, and we get a lot more sun this weekend. 71 Saturday, 75 on Sunday. Justin, we had a we found a house that would fit pretty much the entire morning show team. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Now, and it's just over here in Terrell Hills. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it works out kind of. 505 <laughs> A Ivy Lane is the mm -hmm. address, and it can be yours for the low low price of eight million dollars. It's over twelve thousand square. <laughs> Square feet. The six bedroom home designed by award winning architect Roy Braswell mm -hmm. and covers more than 12,700 square feet. Yeah, it's floor to ceiling windows allow for ample light to flood the interior of the home and custom designs from cabinets to floors are featured throughout the house. But the good part or, or interesting, there's an elevator, mm -hmm. a separate guest house and a pool with a full outdoor kitchen area. For, for eight million, it should have at least one elevator. <laughs> uh, Cooper <laughs> Sotheby's International is listing it and they have a video tour. You can take that online right now on our website at ksat.com. It's always like fun it. to look, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, just look though. Have a great weekend. <laughs>